Good evening and Merry Christmas everybody. Hopefully everybody had a good Christmas and a happy holiday. So uh, tonight I want to go through the, the room that I'm using to grow and propagate some of my cuttings. So this is my home office. Uh, I'm actually kind of taking it over at this point for fig propagation. And on the left I've got my cuttings starting. On the right is where I start to grow them out as they get a little bit larger. So tonight's video is going to concentrate on the fig propagation itself. And in particular, I want to show you the new Fogger cloner that I've made. So all this is is on the top here is the uh, is a Tupperware container just to cover and try to keep some humidity in. And here you can see this is the Fogger bin. So this is a uh, Tupperware container you can buy at either Home Depot or Lowe's and it comes with this lid that has all of these squares in them. And all I did is I took a, uh, I think it was about a two inch hole saw and I cut through to make the insert. I tried using these little baskets and uh, turns out I don't really need them. So I purchased some foam inserts. You can just find these on eBay or Amazon. And these actually squeeze in here nicely and hold in place. And I've actually left a few of the openings without anything in them to let some of the steam up to keep the tops of the cuttings a, uh, a little bit humid. And then on the inside, all I do is I have a fogger that's going. And you can see that fogger is putting enough moisture into the air to keep the base of the cuttings damp. And that just keeps the humidity at about 100% where those cuttings are and keeps them nice and moist for the roots to form. So I just started using this. I had one batch before these guys and they weren't the best cuttings. They were some of my thin, short sickly looking cuttings that I just wanted to give it a try with, you know, no loss if they didn't make it. And what I'll say is they formed root initials very quickly. Um, probably within the first week even, they had root initials. And then the couple weeks after that, only one or two actually formed roots, and the rest of them just sort of sat there with the root initials. So I don't know if they're getting too wet, not enough airflow. I'm not sure what the uh, the deal is. I will say some of them got some fungus on them, or some mold, and what I think happened is the temperature of the water got too warm. And I've read online that once the temperature gets above about 80 degrees, you run into problems. So I'm gonna actually use one of my new Christmas presents I got here. Not exactly meant for this task, but it is an instant thermometer. And so the first thing I want to do is open it up. And I want to see what the ambient room temperature is. So I'm going to turn it on and let it adjust. Okay, it looks like the room temperature is about eh, 72, 73 degrees or so. All right, now I'm going to dip it into the water in this fogger and see if I can do it without dropping my phone in, hopefully. And let's see what the temperature is in here. So I'm gonna stick it in there and give it a second to adjust. It looks like the temperature isn't much different, 72.5 degrees. So it's actually a little bit cooler. So what I was finding is, if you look over on the table there, I had an aquarium heater. And I had that aquarium heater in there, and that aquarium heater was set to, I think, about 82 degrees. That's what my aquarium actually was set to. So when I put it in here, it turned this water up to 82 degrees. And I think that's when I started having significant amount of mold form with the cuttings being too warm. So I've reduced that, I take that, took that out. The room stays about 70 degrees, as long as I keep the door closed and the heat on, the vent open for the forced air. 
It does get dry in here though because I do have um, forced air throughout the house. It dries it out pretty good. But uh, if I keep this going and the uh, heater, the, uh, the, the mister itself, the fogger, should keep the water a little bit warmer than ambient temperature normally. So it should stay in that 70 degree range. Once I get the uh, heat mat in here for the rest of the cuttings, maybe I'll even experiment putting that on the, this on the heat mat to see if it keeps it a little bit warm. And you can see the uh, lid doesn't fit real well. There's some gaps here, so it does let air flow through here. Is it too much, too little? Uh, it's too new for me to really tell, but I'm gonna keep it going and, and see what happens. The first batch of cuttings that I put in there are up here in the 10 gallon aquarium. And the one that had the most roots is actually this guy here, and it had nice leaves on it before I left for Christmas vacation. When I came back from Christmas vacation, this is what it looked like. I'm not sure if the actual media got too dry, it was pretty dry, or if the humidity got too low in the container here. I did notice, if you look closely, I usually keep some water on the bottom, and that water had dried up. You can see this Preto is probably too wet. You can see all the moisture beads on the side. And this one may actually still be a little bit too dry because I don't, it has a little bit of moisture on this side. So what I like to see is somewhere between that guy, you can see all the, the moisture beading on the side and maybe like the one behind it, which looks like it might be a little bit too dry as well. It's got a little moisture, but that's too much. And that with no moisture is too little. So somewhere in between those. But these guys are starting to put out some green buds. This one looks like it's about to leaf out. I don't remember what that is off the top of my head. It is a Preto. So you can see it's starting to put out some leaves. And the only one that actually had roots forming on it were this, was this one. All of the rest of these actually just had root nodules. So I figured I'd put them in here, give them a try, see what happens. They've been in the, the fogger for a few weeks. So, well, it looks like we may have some success, but again, a lot of these cuttings were either weak or short. Um, the one in the back left there was just a real big black askia, I believe. And then some, some of the ones in the back here are just small cuttings that didn't look like they were faring too well, but I figured I'd give them a shot. So overall, so far, I would say that the, the fogger produces root nodules real quick, but I think I'm going to, once they form the root nodules in the fogger, take them out and cup them up and try them from there. And then I also have my old fashioned standby, which is cocoa core in a container. And I've got a bunch of ponds cuttings in here. Oh no, there goes my lid. Um, ponds cuttings that I put in here last night, I washed them in a 10% bleach solution and then put them in this core. The core is moist, it's probably even a little bit drier than it needs to be, but the important thing with the core is if you take it in your fingers like this and you squeeze, no water should come out. It shouldn't drip. That's how you know it's too wet if it drips like that and it'll end up rotting your cuttings. So that one is a little bit too dry maybe, but not, not bad. I mean. I'll leave it in here for another week probably and then add some more water. It's better to be a little bit dry than it is to be too moist. And then I've got this guy here. This Tupperware container. You can see the moisture building up. It's good if you see some moisture building up on the actual container itself. That means that the uh, cocoa has, the core has some uh, moisture in it. And you can see the same thing here. So the uh, I used to use sphagnum moss. And I still like the sphagnum moss. I think if you get the moisture right in the sphagnum moss, it actually works better. The problem you have is trying to untangle the roots when they form from the sphagnum. It actually uh, tangles in there and you end up breaking the roots. So that's no good. Cocoa core is nice and easy to separate in order to get the cuttings out of. So... All right, the uh, one other thing to add is, I forgot to say, on the fogger, I do add a little bit of rooting powder to the, the water. And the other thing that's important to add is a little bit of hydrogen peroxide. 
the hydrogen peroxide, and I'm talking maybe uh, three tablespoons worth of hydrogen peroxide. And the hydrogen peroxide, all that does is prevent the algae from growing in the water itself, keeps your water clean, and provides a little bit more oxygen to the, the roots of your cuttings in order to get them growing. So is it necessary? Probably not if you're going to change your water every few days. Me, I don't plan on changing the water very much. It's just um, in an inconvenient place. So because of that, the hydrogen peroxide keeps the, uh, the algae at bay. Do the same thing for my fountain outside. When my fountain starts to get a little bit of algae, I uh, put some hydrogen peroxide in it, and it clears it up pretty much overnight. So that's about it. It's an update on the cuttings. We'll uh, see how these progress over the next month or so. All right, PA figs, have a good night.